Due to the efforts of Sun Jian and Sun Tzu, peace was restored to Liang. And in an instant, word of the Tiger of Jiangdong spread across the land like wildfire. However, no matter how brave Sun Jian was, the chaos continued with equal fervor and intensity. And so he was dispatched once again in order to quell another rebellion. This time, his opponent was O Xing, who had risen up at Changsha. As a reward, the imperial court promised to appoint Sun Jian the prefect of Changsha. So with the expectations of the imperial court, as well as his family weighing on him, Sun Jian took to the battlefield. In truth, he desired neither fame nor territory. He merely wished for a lasting peace for those who entrusted their lives to him. And with his ambitions sheathed for the time being, Sun Jian went to put an end to the rebellious O Xing. O Xing was defeated thanks to the efforts of the tiger's son, Sun Quan. Now the prefect of Changsha, Sun Jian established a base south of the Changjiang. And there he watched his children grow amid the plentiful meadows of his territory. There was nothing more that his heart desired. However, the land itself was in need of him and his mighty claws. At the capital of Luoyang, a new rebellion was brewing. The warlord Dong Zhua began abusing his power. And so Sun Jian was again requested to participate in the alliance against the evil tyrant. With a considerable push from his son Sun Tzu, Sun Jian agreed to join the cause. With the nobleman Yuan Shao as its leader, Sun Tzu marched together with the coalition against Dong Zhua. Before them lay the formidable gates of Sushui and Hulao, whose defenders were about to hear the mighty tiger's roar. With the imperial seal in hand, Sun Jian left the capital and returned to Changsha. Meanwhile, Dong Zhuo was slain by his retainer Lu Bu at Chang'an. The emperor, who he had kept under his thumb, subsequently fell into the hands of his remaining followers. With the emperor in such a predicament, it was impossible to return the imperial seal to him at that time. And yet, those in the court and their own greedy ambitions could not be trusted with such a powerful object either. So Sun Jian decided to quietly hide the seal so that it would not give rise to a new age of chaos. However, an object of such dazzling beauty and power could not remain hidden forever. Yuan Shao of Hebei learned of the seal's location and demanded that he hand it over. In response to Yuan Shao's threats, Sun Jian turned to another for assistance. It was none other than Yuan Shu, the one man who equaled Yuan Shao in fame and prestige. In exchange for Yuan Shu's protection, Sun Jian agreed to attack Yuan Shu's old nemesis, Liu Biao. Sun Jian took Sun Tzu with him, and together they set out for Liu Biao's territory of Xiangyang. Within his large, powerful hand, the imperial seal glistened in the sunlight as if welcoming the impending battle. Father has the strength, and he is destined to lead. Why is he forced to serve the likes of you and Shu? Surely you all think the same way. Brother, don't say anything you'll regret later. Father is trying to help save the Han. That is why he has the Imperial Seal. He said so himself. He is not looking to use the chaos to seize power. He would rather use his strength to help the people, those that are in need of assistance. Well, I can't accept that. 
forced by Yuan Shu to attack Liu Biao. Our lord must be in turmoil. The seal is a sign? Then our lord will soon be emperor. The castle holds the key to this battle. How are we going to take it down? Lord Sun Jian is loyal to the Han. He has no designs on becoming emperor himself. I'm worried about our lord. He seems lost in thought. The whole atmosphere is tense. Everyone seems on edge. I wonder what can have happened. We don't need Yuan Shu's help. Our lord can unite this land alone. Perhaps I'm being naive. I just hate this depressing atmosphere. I understand your frustration, my boy. But please, put yourself in your father's place for a moment. It is just as difficult for him to be in such a situation. Lord Sun Jian was splendid at Hulao Gate with that red scarf on his head. I wish I could get a glimpse of the Imperial Seal. I bet it shines like nothing else. Interested in a new weapon, sir? A change is as good as a holiday. The seal is a sign? Then our... Your sister was lamenting, my lord, that you and your father are always arguing. What happened? You all used to get along so well. I hear rumor of a grizzled veteran in the enemy ranks who was a mighty bowman. Father's well, much more powerful than either Yuan Shao or Yuan Shu. And now he has the Imperial Seal. It must be a sign. So why are we simply being treated like low-level servants of Yuan Shu's? Sir. I know you're strong, Father. So why don't you take a level of responsibility worthy of your skills? We shall talk about that once the battle is over. For now, let us focus on the task at hand. Now, let's get going. <sighs> Liu Biao is still holed up in the castle. It seems we will have to break down the gates to get inside. Leave it to me, father. For you and Xu will get rid of Liu Biao. Remember that! 
for yours is the first man I shall see. One down. Many more to go. I need to pick up the pace. are a match for mine. Time to attack! 
Everybody, to battle! on the verge of defeat. Yuan Shu will fulfill his promise now. Uh, father. Listen, I... Sir. Oh. Oh. The enemy commander has been slain! Father! No! They mustn't escape! Father? Father! I'm sorry. My death will only hurt you more. You can't die. I still haven't said... Please. My son. You... must... lead the people. Your own way. The tiger could no longer hide his ambitions for the land. And so Sun Jian fell to a plot by Liu Biao, who feared his strength. Hurriedly, Sun Jian's son, Sun Tzu, fled Jing and sought refuge as a retainer of Yuan Shu. Sun Jian had given his life to protect his family and his friends. Determined to carry on the will of his father, Sun Tzu made a decision. He knew that Yuan Shu was determined to keep him close, but only to stifle his true potential. For he feared that Sun Tzu's ambition and military skill would grow to match those of his father. While he had no troops or land to call his own, Sun Tzu did have the support of his family and friends. And so, Sun Tzu decided to trade the Imperial Seal to Yuan Shu. In return, he would receive his freedom and a small regiment of troops. Sun Tzu joined up with his friend, the brilliant Zhou Yu, and together they set out for Jiangdong. It was a place that still contained the memories of his late father. And in this way, the fires of Sun family ambition were passed down to a new generation. We're home, Father. It's good to be back. We were right.
right to give up the Imperial Seal. The Seal means nothing by itself. Authority does not reside in a symbol. It comes with power. So we need to prove our strength. To reclaim our land. Yes. Let's do it, Joyu. I'll follow you wherever you go. I will draw the enemy to the southeast. After that, the rest is up to you, Susan. the garrison. Then we will simply have to make use of the surrounding terrain. The fires of hell shall engulf you. To retreat is not necessarily to lose. Proper strategy can overcome any obstacle. Lord Tyshirt Sir is still being held back. Why would our Lord not use it? The fires of hell shall engulf you. You now will be worth risking your life for. Why don't you join us? And together we'll make a new land. Make a new land? You expect me to believe you have the power to do that? Very well. My life is in your hands. Can recover if we keep our wits about us. With passion. We cannot sit and watch an ally fall. We must provide aid. This battle cries out in need of my might. Remember that! For yours is the first head I shall see! Our position will crumble under these odds. We are counting on you all to defend the main camp. We will hold them off until we can seize an opportunity. The enemy is This should make things easier for my brother. Excellent! Keep 
give it up. I must defeat you to fulfill the duty that I have been entrusted to. We will return as soon as we can. For now, we must fall back. The enemy has fought with true dedication and commitment. I would like to meet their leader. The time is now. This is our chance to finish off the enemy for good. You are not far from the The fires of hell shall engulf you. Your wits are a match for mine. I am impressed. I must not fall behind. I must defeat you. My duty demands it. Now come and face me. The fires of hell shall engulf you. I must retreat. This is not the end. Proper strategy can overcome any obstacle. Joe Yu's come through for us. He has the eyes of a warrior. My name is Tai Shu Tzu, loyal warrior of Liu Yao. Lord Sun Tzu, I request a battle with you. Yeah, bring it on! We will return as soon as we can. For now, we must fall back. One down. Many more to go. Our land will soon be returned to us. Come, men. We're almost there. My brother is showing that he may be the man to lead us once my father is gone. Yes, he now has the vision to match his burning spirit. I will fight for what I believe in.
trickery. But I will do whatever is necessary for my lord. Come then. I am not my father. I have no qualms about feeding you to a pulp. I still fall short. I shall come again. This is not the end! One down! Many more to go! Prepare to march! Everybody, show the enemy what you're made of! Are you showing off? I'm gonna have to keep up then! Teamwork was close! You think you can outsmart me? Don't make me laugh. You will learn to regret this moment. One down! Many more to go! But a temporary setback. We must not underestimate the enemy. However, I refuse to yield to any foe. You're impressive, even alone. I always knew you had it in you. Well done, but you won't beat me so easily. You have it in you to fight on! Never surrender! Brother! Well fought! All right. Now it's my turn! Going solo can be fun, but fighting together with your friends is even more so! Miss Sun Tzu is a most impressive fighter. Just beginning. We will fight and we will win! Have faith and follow me! I will show you the land we all dream of! Incredible. He has the people's ear. Yes. This battle has given him confidence. His passion is now married with strength and charisma. If that is not enough to move the people, then I suppose nothing will.
After defeating Liu Yao, Sun Tzu continued his advance. Having quickly subdued the lands of Jiangdong, the people elected to give him a new name. The Little Conqueror. They compared him to the legendary conqueror Xiang Yu, who had overthrown the Qin dynasty. Meanwhile, in the Central Plains, the hero of chaos, Cao Cao, was steadily increasing his strength. After the emperor fled Chang'an, Cao Cao took him under his protection and moved the capital to Shu Chang. In possession of the imperial seal, Yuan Shu used it to declare himself emperor in order to block Cao Cao's grab for power. However, Yuan Shu's claim was ignored, and an imperial edict was made to slay him for his treachery. For the authority of the emperor lies not in a mere object, but rather in he who wields the most power. These wise words of Zhou Yu would soon be proven true. Sun Tzu moved to obey the edict, and together with his family, attacked Yuan Shu at his base of Shou Chuan. Also present was Cao Cao as well as Liu Bei, whom Cao Cao had taken into his protection. Sun Tzu's heart burned with a fiery passion as he came face to face with these two great heroes of the age. That man, Cao Cao. I don't trust him. It is men like him whom we must keep an eye on in the future. Hmm. He doesn't seem so great to me. He just looks like a creepy old man. Keep it down, will you? <laughs> I'd be careful what I say if I were you. This is Cao Cao's camp, after all. And you are? My name is Liu Bei. I came here to pay my respects to the little conqueror of Jiangdong. Hmm. Sun Tzu, there is something I wish to ask you. Yeah? What can I do for you? Yuan Shu is holed up inside his castle. First, we must break down the castle gates. So I would like your army to attack the western gate. Understood. Please, leave it to us. Excellent. I am counting on you. <laughs>